All right, me. It is the end of the semester. Uh, you've just finished your last classes for your spring semester. Um, and so with that, you finished Stephanie Burt's Advice from the Lights. Uh, this collection was read for gender and sexuality. <clears throat> Stephanie Burt is a professor at Harvard, I do believe, and she um, floats kind of between both the writing, but then also um, doing criticism, uh, literary criticism. So she kind of floats in both worlds. Um, this advice from Light specifically is a book about her transition. Um, this was published, I think, the year after Stephanie Burt transitioned, or maybe even the year before. Um, so there are um, versions of this book that are out there that have her old name. Um, so just be wary of that. Um, but yeah, in this was a really fun collection to to end the um, to end the semester on for this class. Um, it gets into something that we hadn't really discussed in that class yet, which is uh, being trans and what it means to do that. Um, one of the great things I think this collection does is it really shows how much Stephanie Burt wanted to have a girlhood while also accepting that a lot of those things were also bad at the time that Stephanie Burt grew up. Stephanie Burt grew up as a child of the 80s and so it's it's just a very, very different world than the one that we live in today. It's only been 40 years, and yet so much has changed in the way that we think about raising children and the way that we think about how gender influences how we raise children, right? Um, there's... A lot of what we talked about is kind of separating two major steps of sets of poems. Um, there are the My Year poems, which are basically poems that are discussing Stephanie Burt's actual childhood as she had experienced it. Um, and so a lot of it focuses on, on physicality and the immediate presence of what was directly around her growing up um, compared to the second brand of poems, which are the Stephanie poems. Um, and basically it's noun Stephanie or adjective Stephanie. Um, and these Stephanie poems seem to be kind of an imagining of what life would have been like if Stephanie had the ability to have a girlhood, right? And be treated socially as a girl, right? And so you have these really two very, very, I think on the surface level, very similar poems because they're poems that are about childhood, but the way that they, the difference in them and the way that they approach them, uh, the My Year poems are very, very physical about the immediate surroundings um, and often a lot of it is about violence because that's just how we raise boys and that's how boy boyhood a lot of it is about is competitiveness and violence and uh, striving for this kind of one-upsmanship um, that goes along with having a boyhood. And then the Stephanie poems focus a lot more on the emotions that are that are connected with girlhood, um, as well as some of the possibilities 
that Stephanie would have had the opportunity to do if she had been given the opportunity to have a girlhood, right? Um, it, to me, the Stephanie poems invoke this feeling of, and I know I'm not using it in the correct, in the in entirely correct formal way, uh, but it's the Welsh, Welsh word, I'm going to pronounce it wrong and I know it, Hoireth? Hoireth? I think in Eng it's spelled H-I-R-A-E-T-H, Hoireth, um, which is hard to translate. As I recall, the, the best kind of English translation is a sense of longing and nostalgia for something you have never experienced and has like, and you'll never be able to get, right? In context, I th the word is used a lot for like striving for Welsh independence and having an independent Wales. But I think taking that context out and just using this kind of, this evoking of a feeling, I think applies then to the Stephanie poems because the Stephanie poems are a representation and a desire and a nostalgia and a longing for something that Stephanie never got to have, nor is Stephanie, Stephanie ever going to be able to have because Stephanie can never grow up with a girlhood, right? Stephanie only knows the experience of growing up with a boyhood, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, right? Which is part of the reason why gender affirming healthcare and gender affirming treatment is super important, but that's besides the point. Well, that's not besides the point, that is the point. Right. And so Stephanie has to then enter into a world of adulthood in which she has chosen to tra transition as an adult, but now no longer, no longer has the opportunity to experience girlhood and what it means to grow up with a girlhood. And so Right, this is kind of like the, the, the really kind of bigoted way of, of, you know, claiming that, you know, people who are trans are not the gender that they've transitioned to, right? Because in a very bigoted world, people can exclude Stephanie Burke from ever being a woman and ever identifying as a woman because she didn't grow up with a girlhood. But that should not exclude her from identifying as a woman, right? And from transitioning. Um, because we all grow up differently. And that, that's just a fact of life. Um, but yeah, that's my trans rights or human rights deal um yeah yeah the other poem to, to to touch on is the titular poem advice from the lights um advice from the lights is the first poem in the fifth section this collection is broken to, to fifth sections or to five sections and the the poem is intended to be very two-pronged. It's intended to, I think, intended to invoke this kind of idea of a binary system. And what you realize is that, well, Stephanie here is doing both of them. So why does there have to be a two-pronged decision here? Um, the first strophe it's better to, if you never look at any, if you never get close to anyone, 
you can never let them down. Which is better, which is worse than someone letting you down, right? It's it's kind of this It's an egocentric way of thinking about it, but it makes sense. And I think just from a personal level, a lot of people get this, is that you would much rather have people disappoint you than you disappoint others. And the long-term reasoning for that is that I know, or we know that internally, we can't forgive and, we can forgive and forget, right? If someone lets us down, we can forgive them and we can forget them. But we can never understand what another person has done with those feelings. We can never fully understand if someone else has forgiven and forgotten, right? We can only know that somewhere there, there might be a chance that they still remember being disappointed by us. And therefore, we internalize it, right? Um, in a book about transitioning, I, I think this is a very poignant idea because during transition, right, depending on where you're from and the community that you've lived in and the desires of that community, there are going to be people who disappoint you by saying that they're, you know, not accepting of, of the transition. And sometimes you can forgive them, right? You can for, forgive them and move on. And I know I've had a few friends that have transitioned, um, whether that be to fully the other gender or to non-binary and which they eventually forgave some of the people that were initially upset by their transition right but once you transitioned there are people that are disappointed in you because they expect you to live in a certain way right? They expect you to live in a very specific way based on the fact that you were born X way years ago, right? When you were a child and a baby and had no thoughts, right? But they expect you to live that way. And they become disappointed when you decide that no, that isn't what fits me. That isn't what, that isn't what I am. And so they get disappointed and you can never understand and fully know whether that person has ever fully accepted you as someone who has transitioned. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, third strophe in that poem um, is another kind of two-pronged thing and it's a... Um, Oh, what's the what's the poetry term? I don't remember it, but it's 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 a section that is about the ideology of poetry, um, and basically gives this two pronged idea of being a very loud bird or being a child that no one ever listens to, which is, I mean, still very still I think very eighties kind of 90s way of thinking about childhood, but it still makes sense, right? Because children, like birds, are still loud. It's just that the birds are the things that get listened to and the children don't, right? Um, and it, it's kind of this two-pronged decision is whether Stephanie should be a bird and be attempt to be free, but also be very loud. But then also, your well, then your second choice is 
being a child and never wanting anything, but also never being heard, right? And yet, I mean, Stephanie does both, right? Stephanie writes from the perspective of children in both in both senses, right? In both in both binary genders. That's what she does. And so we check the, the second box off, but then we also check the first box off by even publishing this collection in the first place. And being, you know, a professor at Harvard, right? You know. You don't get there just by sitting around doing nothing or no one listening to you. You get there by being loud and being present, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is Stephanie Burt's Advice and Lights. Uh, I think it was a really nice way to end this semester for um, gender and sexuality. Yeah. <laughs>